Uh, the medical examiner has confirmed the deaths of two people at this home that we're talking about. That's at 79, 7019 South Yale. And we're, in told, we're being told by the medical examiner that the victims include an adult woman and an adult man. Property records, as you mentioned, indicate that the home where the bodies were found belongs to the family of singer and Academy Award winning actress Jennifer Hudson. What's up, family? I'm the Mysterious Black Bandit. I know I told you guys, I think last month, that the giveaway was going to be between the 21st or the 26th of March, but that video got restricted on YouTube, so I took it down, but I put it on this video, so this is previously recorded. Good day, my beautiful people. I am the Mysterious Black Bandit. Welcome or welcome back to the soon to be number one true crime slash tragic events channel on YouTube. Now, before we get started, y'all already know what time it is. Giveaway time, baby. Before I announce the winner, let me tell y'all, I am very, very grateful for all you guys becoming a part of the family. There are days that I be wanting to give up on this channel, but when I see you guys comments, it always inspires me to keep going. So thank y'all so much. Now, let's do this thing. For the first winner of this giveaway, drum roll please. Miss S. Farmer. I didn't want to mess up their first name, so I just gave you last name, all right? But thank you so much, Miss Foreman, for all your support. Please send me an email with your Cash App info to theblackbandit3203 at gmail.com so I can send you this good money. Now next, our second winner of the giveaway is, drum roll. Mr. B. I see you got in there a little late, but you did it, my boy. Go ahead and send me an email with your information so I can see you this, this, this good money, all right? And last but not least, drum roll, please. Mr. I am Rain. Go ahead and send me an email with your cash app as well so I can see you this good money too. All right, that'll be it for this giveaway. I want to thank everybody that participated. I will be having several more giveaways this year, so make sure you keep watching this channel so you don't miss out. Now, with that out the way, y'all go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any of these videos. And let's get to it. Okay. I am sure most of you know who Jennifer Hudson is, but if you don't, I'm just going to give you a little short bio on this young lady. So Jennifer Hudson, who was born in Chicago, Illinois, went on a show called The American Idol in 2004 to audition to become a contestant. After Miss Hudson sang Share a Little Love With Me by Aretha Franklin, the judges fell in love with her and brought her on the show. It's an evil wind that blows no good, yeah, yeah. It's a sad heart that won't love like I know it should. Oh, how lonesome. Throughout several episodes, Jennifer was one of the top 10 singers on the show, but unfortunately, her reign came to an end. She last performed Weekend of New England on season three and placed seventh after being sent home by Simon. But ever since she's been kicked off the show, she has thrived. She has won multiple awards, starred in multiple movies, and has her own talk show. Now, while Jennifer was out in the world becoming this superstar, her family back home seemed to be having some problems. In 2006, Julia Hudson, which is Jennifer's older sister, got married to a man named William Balfour who had just been released from prison on parole for attempted murder when he was 17 years old. When Julia first brought up getting married to him, of course everyone in the family was against it, but she decided to go ahead and do it anyway. Now, when you look back at William's past, you kind of understand why they had a problem with it. William came from a family that endured many years of violence, incarceration, and drug use. His grandmother went to prison for killing her boyfriend who allegedly abused her, and his aunts and uncles were heavy drug users. He didn't have much to do with his father because he was locked up in prison for murder as well. His mother, Michelle Balford, had a hard time trying to keep him on the right path, which ended up causing her to physically abuse him and his brother, and after a while, she eventually gave up and allowed the state child welfare to take custody. Now, as William got into his teen years, he spent a lot of time in and out of correctional facilities after joining the gangster disciples, and then when he wasn't locked up, he lived in shelters or with family members, but often ran away to live that street life. Now, for a while, once the state took over, William seemed to start changing his life for the better. 
While living in the group home, he started working for this restaurant and got along with his co-worker. Then in school, he started to get good grades and even had dreams of becoming an architect. But as soon as he returned back to live with his mother, William found himself in trouble yet again. On November 29, 1998, 17-year-old William was spotted breaking into a brand new Chevrolet Suburban outside a neighbor's house. When the owner saw him pulling off, he ran outside and jumped on top of the hood. The police were called immediately and William fled the scene, sending them to a high-speed chase with the guy I still hold known for dear life. But after driving around for a few blocks, he crashed into a telephone pole, throwing the owner off and severely injuring him. The owner pressed charges and this resulted in William being put in prison for attempted murder. Now in 2006, he was finally released from prison on parole and while he was out in his old neighborhood one day, he ran into Julia Hudson, Jennifer Hudson's sister, who was an old classmate from school. Soon after this, the two started dating and from the beginning, Julia tried her best to show him what true love and compassion was all about something that he had never experienced. Now at this time, Julie was a single mother who drove school buses and lived with her mother so she could help watch her son, Julian King. Then shortly afterwards, William ended up moving in and at first he treated Julian like he was his own, declaring himself as a proud father on MySpace and posted several videos of Julian on his page. People in the Inglewood area stated that they often seen William and Julian walking through the park together, frequently take him on what he called boys only trips to Popeyes and McDonald's. Julia and William were deeply in love with one another and despite the whole family telling them not to, they eventually got married. Now as some time went by, William, who had all this previous trauma on top of dealing with depression and abandonment issues, started to show his true colors. He began becoming jealous of anyone who showed attention to Julia. When her own sister, Jennifer Hudson, would send her gifts or money, he would become very upset and start fights with her because he felt that another man was sending her these things. He even started getting jealous of Julia and her own son showing each other affection. When Julian would try to kiss or lay up under his mother, William would say things like, don't kiss my wife, that's my wife, get off my wife, and even threaten him. Now, William's mother stated that their fights had started to get so bad that Julia's mother and brother had to intervene several times. Not even a two full years had passed since they had first got married, and the two eventually had to separate with him being thrown out the Hudson household. Now, regardless of the separation, they did continue to mess around and even try to make things work, but William's anger wouldn't allow that to happen. Allegedly, on multiple occasions, he would even threaten to kill members of the Hudson family if Julia wouldn't take him back, but that was never taken serious. Now, on October 24th, 2008, a day after Julia's birthday, William had stopped by the house, but when he came in, he noticed that she had some gifts that was from a new man she was talking to. This caused him to become very upset and he started yelling and arguing with Julia once again, but she didn't have time for all this mess because she had to get to work. Now, later on that day when Julia finally got off, she returned home and noticed that a bullet hole was in the front door. So she rushed into the living room only to discover her mother's lifeless body lying on the floor in a pool of her own blood. Julia then runs out the house screaming for her son, but after her son didn't respond, she asked the neighbor to go in the house to check and see what's going on. That neighbor walked in the house and came back out with the disturbing news that Julia's mother and brother were dead, but her son was nowhere to be found, and this is when she noticed her brother's SUV was missing. Julia then immediately calls the police to put out an Amber Alert and to report the murders. Come on, please. Please. Please, 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 Somebody did what? Somebody killed my mother. Somebody killed your mother? Yes, help me. Where are you? What's the address? What's that? South Yale Avenue. What? Oh my god. Oh my god. 7019 South Yale. Does she need an ambulance? I don't know. I'm scared. Please. Somebody just put for the ambulance. Yes. Hold please. on. Once the police arrived, they soon confirmed that Julian King was actually missing. The mother had been shot twice, once in the back and once in the chest, and her brother Jason had been shot twice in the head while he was in the bed sleeping. While the house was being searched for evidence, the investigators questioned Julia and asked if she knew of anybody that would want to harm her or her family. And this is when she told them her estranged husband had previously made threats towards her and her family, 
Then she gave them all the information she could to help find him. So after they tracked William down that same day, he was taken into custody for questioning. Detectives spent hours asking Williams about the incident that happened, but he stated that he didn't know anything about the matter and gave them his alibi. Now the police were only allowed to hold him for 48 hours since they didn't have any incriminating evidence to charge him with, but after doing a little investigating, they learned that his parole required him to get anger management and substance abuse counseling, something that he failed to do, which was a violation of his parole. With that information, in addition to the claims of him having a gun, they were able to hold him until his court hearing. Meanwhile, for three days straight, police and investigators searched all throughout the area for the missing SUV and Julia's son, but unfortunately, they wasn't successful. Luckily, on October 27, 2008, the police received a phone call from Lynette Loudon stating that her dog had been barking at this strange vehicle that no one has seen before parked across the street from her home for several days. Once the police arrived, everybody held their breath, fearing the worst but hoping for the best. But unfortunately, when they saw the inside of the SUV, their worst fears had been confirmed. Julian King's lifeless body was resting on the rear seat with his small hands protruding from under a dirty shower curtain. The autopsy showed that he had been shot and killed 48 to 74 hours prior to finding him. Now, as some time went by, police found out that William's alibi was a total lie. Allegedly, around 9 a.m., William had come back to Julia's mother's house, fired a bullet through the door, which actually hit his mother. Then he burst into the door and shot her a second time, knocking her on the floor. Then he walks back to the bedroom where the brother was and fires two shots in the back of his head while he was asleep. By this time, Julian had come out the room to see what was going on because he heard the gunfire. So William grabs up the keys to his brother-in-law's SUV, picks up Julia and takes him to the vehicle, then they take off down the street. With this information, in addition to his current or former girlfriend telling investigators she saw William with the gun that was identical to the murder weapon several days before, he was finally arrested and charged with three counts of first degree murder for the deaths of his in-laws and his stepson. On April 23rd, 2012, the trial finally started and William maintained his innocence for the three murders and he claimed that the police planted evidence on him just so they could take him in. If you didn't kill Jennifer Hudson's family, who, who did? I don't know. I mean, I could sit here and speculate to many names and just throw them out there to you. It, it still won't solve it. Period. Now, his defense attorney claimed that the only reason the police were so swift about arresting him was because the victim's sister was Jennifer Hudson and they didn't properly investigate the killings. For instance, not only was Jason Hudson, the brother, a known drug dealer, he lived in the Inglewood area, which was possibly the most dangerous neighborhood in the city of Chicago, and he had been shot by someone in the past. They stated that missing this type of information could have played a vital role in their death. Now, the prosecutors claimed that he was in such a rage because Julian wasn't coming back to him, and once he killed off the family, he had to kill Julian because he was in the way and could be a key witness against him. During the trial, they called on 80 witnesses to testify in this case and stated that William shot and killed members of the Hudson family because of his rage and possessiveness. Both the defense and prosecutors went back and forth for 11 days, with one side claiming DNA and fingerprint evidence in the case did not link William to the murder weapon, while on the other side went off the witness testimonies and his cell phone record. But on May 11, 2012, the jury took an 18-hour deliberation before finding William Balford guilty of three counts of first-degree murder, home invasion, aggravated kidnapping, residential burglary, and possession of a stolen motor vehicle. In the end, the judge imposed a consecutive life sentence for each of the murders, as well as 120 years without the possibility of parole. And that will bring this sad, sad video to an end, my good people. After this horrible incident, Jennifer Hudson actually forgave William, stating that, for the most part, it's not his fault. It was the way he was taught and brought up, so he never had a chance. But in the aftermath, Jennifer Hudson took a few months off from her career, but shortly picked back up and even won herself a Grammy. When she was asked how she coped with the pain on that horrific day, she stated that the birth of her son with her husband helped her the most. Alright family, that will do it for now. Y'all let me know your thoughts on this video down in the comments. And if you enjoy videos like this, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. I hope you all had a wonderful and prosperous day. And until next time, stay mysterious my friends.